expanding so-called American dominance across the world, eliminating Muammar Gaddafi, Syria, Egypt, Ukraine, coups at the coups at the coups. He tried to eliminate the uh, president of Syria, Assad, was that's his name, but they were protected and supported by Turkey and Russia. So therefore, the president of Syria maintains his power. We cannot let this witch, this devil, this demon, Kamala Harris, this skeezer, attain the White House because it will create a, a devastating precedent for the foreseeable future of the Negroes, the children. Just like in the 1900s, the late 1800s, when we allowed these devils to destroy our communities, to rob our banks without consequences that let these devils know they could do whatever they wanted to us and nothing would happen to them. And we see the same thing happening generation after generation, economic devastation, communities being destroyed, gentrification with no consequences. All the Negro wants to do is to, to hold hands with the person who destroyed your families, destroyed your communities murder your ancestors, murder your neighbors. You want to be cool. You want to hold hands with these people. Demented notions, demented mentality. Now we got the Jim Crow Joe. First day, he signed executive orders to legalize illegal aliens, protect illegal aliens, Africans, Mexicans, Venezuelans. He opened the borders and let millions of illegals in give them free housing, free education, free health care. And most of these American Negroes can't even get free health care, braces, t dental, who was born in America. Yet these, these, these things, these creatures crawl over the border to get put in the front of the line to get all of the resources under Jim Crow Joe and his witch, his wench, his bed wench, Kamala Harris, who've done nothing but giggle for the past 20 years, giggling, smiling. Cause they know all the Negro do, gotta do, all they gotta do to get a Negro is to smile at them. You think they're your best friend? They smile at you, smile in your face and stab you in your back. And they know these ignoramus, illiterate Negroes will go out there and vote, cause this niggers has brown skin. Pretty much every East Indian you see has brown skin, but they don't want anything to do with you. They come here with their ghetto slum, slum mentality, their caste system where they step on each other, eat eating each other, eat doggy dog society of East India, billions of people sleeping on top of each other, and they're going to bring that mentality here. They're not going to be advocating for anybody but their own self-interests, just like they always have done, and they're going to pander to the Negro fascination with seeing a Negro in power Negro colonialism in Africa they implant the, the government with these sell out Negroes and they do the bidding of Europe against their own people this is exactly what's been happening in the United States in Chicago we got this dude with black skin Brandon Johnson he got elected because he got black skin and since he's been elected he's done nothing for the Negroes, no resources, no empowerment programs. All he did was give billions of dollars to some illegal aliens, housing illegal aliens, bragging about what he did for illegal aliens. This monkey, this coon, he got elected because of his skin and he used that deception because he knows black people are so stupid. All they care about is skin, skin tone, skin color. And this black skin, they're gonna empower this Negro, brainwash this Negro. So this Negro was born and this was was raised in Elgin, Illinois. He wasn't even from Chicago. It's like Barack Obama. He ain't from Chicago. He used that to try to get credibility. He was born in Hawaii, Indonesia, wherever this wherever he came from. Moved to Chicago, married some dude named Michael, who became a woman. And now he's the uh, black president from Chicago. Yeah, you can't let these people continue to deceive you. 
if you let these people continue to deceive you, you deserve whatever you get. When they bring in 50 million illegals and they kick all these Negroes out their houses like they're trying to do in the south suburbs when they raise the property taxes. When you lose your house, that's what you get. Whatever they, whatever happens to you, you get exactly what you deserve. And just like when we was in the wilderness in the book of Exodus, all these old Negroes, we got to wait till they die off because they're in, they, they have a fascination with their oppressor. They want to go back to slavery. They want to go back to Egypt. They want to do whatever it takes to please their masters. So we got to let these old Negroes, Farrakhan, uh, Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, all of these old Negroes, we got to let them just wither away, get out the way. It's going to take another 20, 20, 40, 50 years to all these old sellout Negroes die off. And these HBCU Negroes, these uh, Howard University Negroes, even in a uh, book, Up From Slavery, Booker T. Washington talked about the Howard University Negroes. All they wanted was a, a, a be a Pullman Poter and wear a nice pair of pants, a nice suit, and be a Pullman Poter. That's all they wanted to do in Howard. They wasn't trying to have no power. They wasn't trying to build nothing for themselves. They just want that job working for Pullman and wear that nice suit, and nothing has changed. Nothing has changed with these Howard University Negroes. Since the early eighteen, late, early nineteen hundreds, late eighteen hundreds, when Booker T. Washington dropped this book up from slavery, the Negroes from Howard University's done nothing, try to get a job working for their masters, and, dre and dress nice. They want to dress nice with nice clothes, nice shoes, a nice hairdo, and smile. That's all they want to do. But you can't let this witch attain the, the house. Can't let this witch pander and capitulate to you stupid ignoramus Negroes. Because all you care about is getting smiled at and having brown skin. You don't care about the future. You don't care about uh, leaving a legacy to the to the children. Look at all the old Negroes and gave our, our genres and cultures to the white folks. They gave the blues away, rock and roll away, jazz away. Rap music away, disco, funk. They gave it all away. And not only that, the Negroes and gave their laboratories away. Percy Julian sold his laboratories and moved to Oak Park. He told them, nigga, go home. Everything the nigga done attained and acquired, they gave it all away for nothing. Sold their future for a bag of beans, a bag of magic beans. Go into the sky and get a, a golden a golden goose. The golden goose is in the sky, but you gotta first sell your your civilization to me for a bag of beans. Yeah, that's about it. Stop voting for Democrats. Stop participating in these sadomasochistic relationships. These toxic, abusive relationships. The abuser thinks that you enjoy being tortured, demeaned, deceived, abused. The Stockholm Syndrome, when we have an affinity to with our oppressor, with our captors. We empathize and sympathize with our kidnappers. This is a mental illness. We had Bill Clinton, the last three Democrat presidents, Bill Clinton, Barack Obama, Joe Biden, and now we're talking about Kamala Harris. That would be 24 years under the Democrats. In those 24 years, let's just say the 20 years, the eight years under Bill Clinton, the eight years under Barack Obama, the four years under Joe Biden. Bill Clinton, the way he got elected, he went to Arsenio Hall show, played the saxophone with sunglasses on. They say he's black. Therefore, he gets elected. He gets the black vote because he's on Arsenio Hall. He plays the saxophone and he smoked weed. And he had Monica Lewinsky. We look at the policies of Bill Clinton. The crime bill, 94 crime bill, ironically created by Joe Biden, created mass incarceration, mandatory minimum, charging children as an adult, truancy laws, 
throwing parents in jail for truancy, similar to what Kamala Harris did as a prosecutor, incarcerating black women for truancy, throwing black men in prison for extended periods of time to use them as slave labor, talking about fighting fires, Kamala Harris. So the Democrats use prisons to punish the black man in particular and the black woman and truancy. Look at what Bill Clinton did with NAFTA and his other trade deals. He sent all of our factories, our major factories to Mexico, China, Indonesia for cheap labor, causing mass unemployment in the black communities in Flint, Michigan, Chicago, Indiana, Gary, Indiana, was destroyed the black communities economically who depended on those factories. What else did Bill Clinton do? He made it so the black women couldn't get uh, welfare anymore unless they had a job. So not only did they kick the black man out the house, they kicked the black women out the house and made them pay these extraordinary fees for daycare instead of letting them stay at home and take care of the children. Now they gotta get these minimum wage jobs to get crumbs. Bill Clinton did this. What did uh, Barack Obama do? They say he's a black president. Change. He's an Afri he's In reality, he's a white man and an African, but he used the same logic as Bill Clinton. He's a black man. So therefore, he gets the votes. What did Barack Obama do as soon as he get in? He bailed out the banks, financed the banks to uh, foreclose on all of the black housing, caused mass, un uh, mass homelessness in the black community particularly. A lot of the uh, housing went into foreclosure. We lost our housing. Now you go to the black communities in Indiana, Chicago, all over the United States. The housing that we lost under Barack Obama are now being occupied by Mexicans. Barack Obama made gay marriage illegal. He legalized gay marriage. He legalized illegal aliens, talking about DACA, deferred action for childhood arrivals. Gave them work vouchers, free education, housing. What did he do for the black people? Nothing. Not one policy did Bill Clinton do to help the black people but the policies that him and Barack Obama did hurt the black people. Barack Obama gave $16 trillion to the white owned corporations in America and Europe. He bailed out Greece. He bailed out uh, Bank of America, Chase, and they went and foreclosed on the black people, blamed the black people, talking about subprime mortgages, blamed us for the economic crisis, evicted the black people. And then he brought in a bunch of Mexicans, illegal aliens. And then he legalized gay marriage. And then he started wars all over the world. ISIS, Kadha he killed Gaddafi. He, he, he did a, a, a coup in Ukraine, Yemen, Syria. Obama was a war warlord, but he did nothing to help the black people. He did not one uh, hate crime bill to protect black people. Barack Obama didn't do anything to help black people. He helped illegal aliens, DACA. He helped uh, the white corporations. And then when they was gonna close down the historically black university in Chicago, Chicago State, talking about they didn't have the funding, Barack Obama and then Mayor Rahm Emanuel was about to let Chicago State go out of business. Guess who saved Chicago State? The Republican Governor Bruce Rauner save Chicago State. It wasn't Barack Obama, the then president, nor uh, Rahm Emanuel, the mayor. It was the Republican governor that saved Chicago State. Now look at Joe Biden. He told you, you're not black. See, they keep using the black thing. Joe Biden said, you're not black if you don't vote for me. And then he got the so-called black woman, who's really an East Indian. So the last three Democrat presidents Pander to the black people talking about you're they're black they somehow got black connections a so-called black vice president the black president bill clinton and the so-called black president barack obama with the crime bill joe biden jim crow joe biden they all say you're not black or well, they black somehow got to do with black but they in, in them 20 years of that nothing joe biden barack obama bill clinton nothing to help the blacks but all to hurt the blacks and what did Joe Biden do? He made executive orders to help illegal aliens 
when you had those Haitians that came over the border, Joe Biden sent them back. He only want the Mexican, the, the Hispanic migrants. Open the border up, let in millions of migrants, gave them billions of dollars. You got wars going on in Ukraine, in Israel. What else he do? Inflation. What else he do? A lot of people died under the coronavirus, under Joe Biden with his mandates. What else he do? Nothing. Nothing. He did nothing for the blacks. They don't deserve your vote. They're sadistic. They think of uh, deceiving you because you. they think you're gullible. They think you just enjoy being deceived and abused. You, you enjoy being stepped on and demeaned, degraded, and according to them. But don't vote for none of them. If you vote for Kamala Harris, that'll be 24 years of nothing. You're giving somebody all and they're giving you nothing in return. That's an imbalanced relationship. I wrote this poem when Barack Obama was the president and I think it's relevant to today. It is called The World and is in one of my books, uh, Parts of Man, A Declaration of Truth. Go to my website, enigma.com. They're murdering millions in the name of democracy, spreading hypocrisy, blaming Qaddafi. Look at your own country, corporate slavery, sugar-coated reality, elitist pranks, corporate banks sank. Do you think presidents are kings allocating our money to give to the thieves? Corporate greed is in their genes. It's a trickle-down effect from the peasants to the kings. Your education is useless if all it produces is cup-holding constituents, prostitution candidates, gun-toting residents, savages. It's evident that what you learned is irrelevant if it's all about the cash that you left on your with no backup plan if the money didn't last. Fallacious philosophies, enslaved to identities, corrupting the youth, twisting the truth, influencing their mentality the wrong way, encouraging criminality or become gay, ethical pollution, hood rats and homo thugs, prostitution and selling drugs. At home, you show no love. Outside, they're shooting slugs. People are having children for no reason. They grow up and go to prison. Daddy didn't want a son, he wanted flesh. Mama didn't want a child, she wanted a check. What about the future of the next hundred years? Will we even be here? The evolution of thought headed one way. The revolutions are fought to bring a better day. The constitutions are brought because the children are taught. Being righteous is God's way. The institutions are sought because the leaders are bought to maintain society. The status quo, class struggling, drug smuggling, media disguising, and you're not realizing it. For 200 years, we cried 200 tears. We're still here ignorant. Back to Africa on slave ships. The price of life, if you can't afford it, don't try to distort it, they won't report it. Yeah, I'm back on my campaign to prevent Kamala Harris to sabotage, to stop Kamala Harris from becoming president for our own good. What's probable is possible. Statistics is everything. Any racist will know based on statistical evidence that under blacks, under black leadership, nothing gets done for the people. Black people loses wealth, loses power, loses everything, and gets nothing from the government under blacks. In Chicago, we have nothing but black politicians. In Cook County, government. In the state of Illinois, we have a black woman, a lieutenant governor. We have a black mayor. Yet, the black community is suffering black on black crime, disinvestment, poverty, food deserts, illegal aliens getting free housing, free money under a black mayor. So it'll be in the best interest of any racist Ku Klux Klan member to want a black president because nothing will happen for the people. It's just statistics. It's just probable, possible. History best qualifies our research. If you want to know what's going to happen in the future, all you got to do is look at what happened in the past. And we can't see not one successful instance within the last 70 years that black people have prospered and grew as a population under black leadership. Not in the uh, church, not in politics, the government, not in the household, nothing. So of course, they're going to let this witch, this wench gets in because they know she's going to do nothing for you. I'm going to tell you exactly the reason why this is real. This is true. Because these black Greeks, the talented tent Negroes, the so-called divine nine, believe that 90% of Negroes should be dead, should be poor, should be exterminated, so the remnant can go integrate into this utopian fantasy 
called integration. This was the uh, philosophy proposed and, and promoted by W.E.B. Du Bois and written in, in extensive detail in his book Up From Black Folks. I mean, uh, uh, The Souls of Black Folks. I kind of mixed it up with Up From Slavery, which was the book that came out before The Souls of Black Folks, in which Booker T. Uh, Booker T. Washington wrote this book detailing his life as a slave and as the president of Tuskegee Institute. But W.E.B. Du Bois wrote his book to counter Booker T. Washington's philosophy of doing for self, casting your uh, bucket where you are, pulling yourself up from your bootstraps, separation. Booker T. Washington was a staunch, staunch separatist, black nationalist. Du Bois was an integrationalist Negro. And W.E.B. Du Bois' philosophy prevailed, and the black Greeks including Dr. Martin Luther King pushed for integration into white society which destroyed the black businesses destroyed our communities, our families everything and he was a politician, he talked to politicians we see the results of his philosophy Kamala Harris is a black Greek from Howard University aka with the pink and green colors she's going to do nothing but destroy Negroes, the 90% she, her only interest is for the 10% remnant, the so-called uh, elite leadership Negroes. She's only interested in them integrating into white society by sacrificing the vast majority of Negroes. We've seen it happen with Dr. King, with W.E.B. Du Bois. We've seen what happened to all of these black leaders. Nothing comes from it. The black mayor in Chicago, even the other black mayor, Harold Washington, who made it a sanctuary city for illegal aliens in 1985. Harold Washington left no legacy for blacks whatsoever. Yet blacks love him because he has brown skin, black skin. They know all you care about is seeing a person in power with black skin. Even though you're not going to get anything from it, you're not going to benefit from it. You're not even going to benefit vicariously from it. You just look up there and smile. Look at that. One of us. He's not one of you. They're not your people. These Negroes want you dead. The Tuskegee Syphilis Project was ran by black Greeks who, who injected syphilis into their own people. The Eunice Rivers, the head nurse of the Tuskegee Syphilis Experiment, working with Sidney Alansky, a white Jew, who believed in the philosophy of eugenics, Margaret Sanger. The boys, W.E.B. Du Bois worked with Margaret Sanger to sterilize and abort black babies, sterilize black women who he felt were undesirable because they weren't educated and they were poor. The Negro Project, W.E.B. Du Bois, the black church, and you, uh, Margaret Sanger public health, Department of Public Health, the black preachers, Louis Farrakhan, all of them is trying to create this false, fallacious utopia. They're going to somehow integrate with their oppressors while exterminating and sacrificing 90% of their own population. This is what I'm going to add to this live stream. We're going to defeat YouTube. I know I'm banned. I'm shadow banned, but I'm going to add this video and continue the movement. Also go to the website down there and purchase my books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Continuing my campaign to prevent this wicked witch from the West, Kamala Harris, from ascending, attaining the presidency. I heard this wicked witch appear in the West Coast of California by way of the pregnancy. Her mother was an East Indian from Jamaica. Her father was an East Indian from Jamaica. And when they was uh, pregnant, they did a birth tourism to have this baby. So this baby can get United States citizenship. She's an anchor baby. But I know the truth about East Indians from Jamaica. By way of the U.S. Code, the Ku 
coolie trades are abolished in the U.S. code. The coolie trades were an agreement between Great Britain under Queen Victoria in the late 1800s. The Qing Dynasty of China and India in which Queen Victoria was the Empress of India. They agreed to ship millions of uh, Chinese and East Indians to the Americas. This was during the Opium Wars. The United States and the uh, Western powers, European powers, used opium to subdue the Qing Dynasty and Siam, modern day Thailand, and other nations, ancient nations. They used drugs. The first and second opium wars. And they shipped millions of East Indians and Chinese to the Western Hemisphere. But the United States abolished the coolie trade so they couldn't send them to the United States. They went to Canada, Mexico, the islands, Caribbean islands, South America. Chinese and East Indians to repopulate the Americas. Or to compete with the American Negroes and the Native Americans. The real Americans are the Negroes. All these other races came by way of the coolie trades. But I'm talking about this to say that I know where you come from, Jezebel. Jim Crow Joe and uh, Kamala Harris represent biblical figures, prophecies. Jim Crow Joe, how he lost his mind right before they kicked him out of office, is akin to when Nebuchadnezzar lost his mind after he built a 40-foot statue and told everybody who didn't bow to this statue was going to be burnt in an oven. Meshach and Bendigo and the other guy was thrown in the oven and an angel protected them from the fire. Nebuchadnezzar was cursed with a dream and then he had to go to Daniel in the book of Daniel to interpret his dream. The same people he tried to burn in a fire in an oven. Daniel told Nebuchadnezzar, Thou art the tree. You are the tree. And when he told him, You are the tree, he lost his mind and became an animal, a beast, he was fed grass. He woke up out of his uh, stupor. Persia, the Medes and the Persia, and conquered Babylon. King Cyrus declared that the God of Israel is the God, the real God. Jim Crow Joe was Nebuchadnezzar. Jim Crow Joe was also King Saul before his demise. He saw that King David was going to be the next king of uh, Israel. King Saul tried to kill David, throwing spears at him. But God knocked those spears out the, out the air to protect King David. Kamala Harris, the wicked witch from the west, is Jezebel, the queen of Israel, who was really a foreigner. She was a Phoenician, a Canaanite. She was a Carthaginian. She was the queen of Israel, and she killed all the prophets, and, and she created her own god, the god of the Phoenicians, the Canaanites. Baal. She had false prophets of Baal. She tried to kill Elijah. She kept throwing Elijah in prison. She kept persecuting Elijah. And Elijah had a showdown with Jezebel, false prophets of Baal, and the, and his, and the real God of Israel. And when they saw that the, the, uh, false, pro the false God Baal had no power, all the false uh, prophets of Baal was put to death. And I'm not going to talk about, I'm not going to mention what happened to Jezebel because they might come and lock me up. But Kamala Harris, where is Ahab? Where is that white man you married? Where is your Ahab at? Ahab was the king of Israel. Kamala Harris right now is trying to become the king of America. She's trying to become the personification of Jezebel. When she was the uh, prosecutor, the persecutor 
in California, the West Coast, the Wicked Witch of the West, she was doing exactly what Jezebel did, oppressing and, and, and imprisoning the people of God, the Wicked Witch of the West. Hold on. I'll find the street. But yeah, we got to prevent this devil from becoming the president because she has not promised, made any promises that she's going to do to help the black community. No Democrat president has ever promised to help the black community. Has ne ever made a, a pledge, an oath, that they're going to do something to improve the conditions of the blacks. Not one. So why do they deserve your vote? Every time you vote for them, your communities get destroyed. You get more impoverished. Even with the uh, Lyndon Johnson, when he signed the Civil Rights Act, that dis uh, that dis disempowered black people. We lost all of our economic sovereignty due to integration, and then they created a caste system, minority majority. Before that, we were separate but equal. We're no longer equal just a, a, a another minority subjected to white men because of the Democrat Lyndon Johnson and you say that was a good thing that was not a good thing when you lose power when your families are destroyed when your communities are destroyed that is not a good thing Jim Crow Joe never uh, never condemned the Ku Klux Klan never condemned the Ku Klux Klan yet they made Obama condemn Farrakhan even though Farrakhan is just another uh, sellout Negro he was forced to condemn Farrakhan but Jim Crow Joe was never forced to condemn the Ku Klux Klan but yeah do not vote for this wicked witch of the West it's good that Nebuchadnezzar lost his mind. He will always, it will always be a Nebuchadnezzar that loses his mind. We're doomed to keep fulfilling these prophecies until all the prophecies are fulfilled. You're always gonna have a Nebuchadnezzar. You're always gonna have a Jezebel. You're always gonna have an Exodus. Always gonna have a group of sellout Negroes who wanna go back to their masters in Egypt to be slaves. Roland Martins. Uh, uh, Jesse Jacksons, Farrakhan's, Al Sharpton's. It is inevitable. It's going to continue until all prophecies are fulfilled. And that's about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We cannot support this witch, this devil this anchor baby this vitriolic skeezer named Kamala Harris we cannot support the Democrats because the last three Democrat presidents starting with Bill Clinton to Joe Biden they all capitulated pandered to the black vote Bill Clinton got on Arsenio Hall show sunglasses he played the saxophone and because he played the saxophone he was considered black and when he got become president when he became president he passed policies signed policies to to create mass incarceration of the black people the black man in particular he sent the corporations to china indonesia mexico with his trade deals he demolished the so-called middle class, the black middle class, which created these desert ghettos. Drug usage skyrocketed under Bill Clinton. No longer did we have dare say no to drugs. The commercials that tried to discourage the children from participating in crime and using drugs, that was all eliminated under Bill Clinton. He wanted us to sell the drugs, to use the drugs, 
to join the gangs to go to prison because the gangs are distribution networks for the CIA and the FBI to distribute drugs to the Negroes, to destroy the Negroes, to imprison and incarcerate the Negroes. This is what Bill Clinton did when he became the black president. He used that bait and switch to destroy the Negro. And then Joe Biden, no, no, Barack Obama got in. The Negro, first Negro black president from Africa, a white woman, mother. De vote, vote or die. The notion from perpetuated by P. Diddy, vote or die, change. And then when Barack Obama got in, he forgot about the Negro. He focused his attention on the homosexuals, the illegal aliens, waging international 